I hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to Disney Blender tutorial in which we're gonna learn how to make this particle simulation we're watching right now on the screen. It's like a sci-fi... I don't know how to say it, but it looks really interesting. And it is actually really easy to make. So without anything else to say, let's just begin with the tutorial. The first thing we're gonna do as always is to delete everything we have in the scene and we're gonna add right here an icosphere that we're gonna set the subdivisions into something like 3. This is really not important, but I don't know. I just like to do that. We're gonna scale this very small and we're gonna go into the particle properties and click on this plus icon and press play and now we have particles happening. But these particles are just falling down right now, so in order to make these particles like go everywhere what we have to do is to come right here into the scene properties and turn down the gravity and now we can press play and we can see that our particles are going everywhere but they are disappearing really fast so in order to change that we have to go back into the particle properties and then click right here where it says the end of our animation where, where we want these particles to stop appearing we're gonna put this something around the uh, frame 70 the, I mean 170 and that shouldn't make a big change in how long this our particles disappear and we have we have to change our lifetime into something like let's say 100 and now our particles we will go a lot will live for a longer time and disappear further away from our emitter and maybe we can change this to something like 200 and now we can see a very big difference as you can see our particles keep going and keep going all the way up to the frame 200 that is where they are starting to disappear we can maybe th make this animation a little bit longer and set this to i don't know 350 instead of 200 you can use the mouse wheel to make this timeline a little bit longer and now we can change the number of particles into let's say 70,000 and now we have a lot more of particles going on and this is not too heavy yet as uh, maybe you can think that this is really heavy for your computer but actually it's not that much as you may think so we can play with this value later we're gonna put a higher value right there but for now this is completely fine the next thing we have to do is to press shift a and add a cube and move it a little bit to the side something around here and scale it a little bit down why do we use a cube and that's that's because this cube the cube has a lot of less faces than other polygons like spheric polygons and the particles are going to be so small that you won't be able to see the difference between a cube and a little sphere so we're going to go back to the emitter we can change this cube in this cube's name into particle and then change the icosphere name into emitter and then here in the emitter we're gonna go right here into render and change the render as object and then select the instance object we want to use as our particles and select the particle we have right here and now if we press play we can see that we have a lot of little cubes going out of our sphere I want to go into the world properties and set this background color into black and then select this cube and go into the shading panel add a new material to the cube make sure that you have your particle selected and then change this emission into a color you want something like green and higher this emission value and now if we go back into the layout and turn out turn on the render you can see that you have this strange thing going on that looks actually really nice and you can go here to the render properties and right here where it says bloom just turn it on and you can get this shiny effect right here and that can help you to know how much emission do you want right here to get this bloom not so exaggerated you can put something like like let's say 10 and that is just perfect i think and now in order to change a little bit the the movement of our particles what we have to do is to add right here a uh, right here where it says force field add a turbulence force field 
And now if you go to the beginning, you can see that something is starting to happen, like particles are moving a little bit different than how they mo moved before. But if we want to exaggerate this effect, we can go right here into the physics properties of our uh, turbulence force field and we can change the strength of this let's put something like five and now we can press play and we can see that something is starting to happen right here if we go into the render view we can see exactly what is going on and now let's hire a little bit more our intensity let's put something like 10 go to the beginning and press play now you can see this thing right here going on let's set this into 20 maybe and now we have movement in our particles and now in order to make this like a little bit more organized let's say that we don't get only random movement we can place even something like 30 we can go right here where it says flow and this flow basically will make that we have like little paths in our movement so let's put something like three and see what happens if we press play now we can see that particles are moving like in little groups if we zoom in we can see that they are moving like not just randomly around they are also getting these kind of paths in their in their way we can go to the shading and lower a little bit more the emission because right now we cannot like see exactly what's going on with our particles let's set it to something like two and then go back to the layout and we can see that the particles are moving but we have like little places in which they get more organized than other than other places so we go back into our for uh, our turbulence and we're gonna set this flow into something like let's say 10 just to see what happens we're going to get like very uh, you can see specific paths through which our particles are flowing and I think we don't want this so I'm going to set it back to 3 and we press play and we can see that we get something like this if you pause your animation you can see like a better what is going on if you want you can add right here another force field let's say something like a vortex and put it a little bit to the side and right here go into the frame I don't know 60 and press I and then put a keyframe in the location move forward like 100 frames and move it all to the left and then press I again location and then just turn off we can press play and see what's happening our particles are moving somewhere and they go back to their to the other side and right here we can like around frame 150 we can by selecting the vortex we can press i in the force and then go one frame or two frames forward and set this into zero to turn it off and right here particles will stop being affected by this force field and they will start moving only affected by the turbulence force field we had in the middle of our animation and now maybe we can set the end of this animation into frame 260 because right here it looks pretty well and now let's go back into the shading uh, panel and select the particle again and now we can press shift a and a, a particle info node and connect the velocity into the emission color and sadly this node only works in cycles if you want you can just animate straight up this emission um, parameter by, by pressing i again but if you want this next effect we're going to see right now you have to change the render engine into cycles and now we can let's make some space by dragging from the corners right here move this a little bit down and then drag up from here and then set this into a timeline and we can move forward to see what is going on with our particles we can press play right here and see what's happening so in order to see this in the cycles render we want to go right here into the uh, particle properties go back to the emitter and right here where it says cache uh, click right here where it says bake and this will bake your animation so that it doesn't take as much to 
do the preview as it would take if we didn't do this. And once the bake is done, we can move forward and see how our new color is looking. And right now we're getting like a rainbowish uh, texture with the particles and this is really nice. But if you want to change this color into like, let's say, just one um, color, uh, like base color, we can press Shift A and add right here a color ramp and it, this will make the values go from black to white and we can change these colors to be something like maybe I don't know red to like yellowish green right here and now we can see that colors change all along the animation and particles move animate and create this changing color all along the way and once all of this is set we have to go back into the layout and add the camera wherever you like it select a camera by pressing shift a and now go to the view align view align active camera to view and in order to move it as always we're going to press n and go to the lock camera uh, i'm sorry lock camera to view and now we can move this camera as if it was another viewport and we can put it something around here maybe we can move in the timeline to see how our, uh, our animation will be looking come right here into the output properties and then where we have the i mean the render properties where we have the render engine and all of that and right here by default you have the 4096 and change this to something like 50 you're not going to be needing more than that if you're rendering with cycles if you're rendering with ev you this won't make a big difference you can put this sampling just as it is and but if we're doing it with cycles we can set this into 50 and that will be just right and then come to the emitter and disable it from the render view because if we don't we will get this little sphere in the center of our scene and we don't want that to happen and then come into the particle system and right here where it says render uncheck this little box that says show emitter right here and now if we press render image we can see that we no longer see the sphere we had in the middle and before we press render we have to go back into the particle properties right here in the emitter and when we have the cache information press delete bake and bake it once again it's not necessary to bake it again, but I do it again because if you don't have this bake done when you send the render, this render will be just empty. And so now, once we have this thing baked, we just have to press render and render animation. And that's all we have to do for this beautiful particle system animation, let's say... Uh, let's say simulation it's really easy to make i tried to explain a little bit how the things that i did affected the process of of creating it so that you could create something a little bit different or something that you like and that this doesn't stay only in a simple tutorial to make this setup so if you like the tutorial please like and subscribe i hope you really enjoyed this video and i hope to see you practice a lot and i hope to see you in the next tutorial